What is up, guys? I am in Ecuador at my house on my terrace. It's, this is actually the second time in five months that the government has told me I shouldn't leave my house. I think we're only allowed to go out for the pharmacy, the doctors, and the grocery store. Um, before it was the protests. Now it's the coronavirus. But I don't want to talk too much about it, the coronavirus today. Today I am going to compare living in China versus living in Ecuador. I got a handy little chart here. This is from my point of view, so if you disagree with anything, I'm still right. But feel free to let me know in the comments if you have different experiences. I used to live in Chengdu, China for three whole years. Now I'm living in Quito, Ecuador, and it's been around seven months. The two places are very different, obviously, but I've been thinking a lot about what I like about each place. I'm ready to spew it all out in a video, so here it is. Blah. We're going to start things off with things to do, things to keep me entertained in either country. Right away, Ecuador scores a big point based on the fact that there's just more that interests me in Ecuador. For example, concerts, there's better music, uh, they like rock music here. Even Latin music is, is better in my opinion than traditional Chinese music. Uh, bands like Slipknot, Guns N' Roses have come here since I've been here. and. There's a lot of great cover bands. You're always seeing like a Nirvana cover band in some bar. We went to a Beatles Tribute Symphony concert in the Botanical Gardens. The culture in Ecuador is just more similar to Canada, so it's easier to enjoy. There are craft beer festivals, food festivals. The events are more international. In China, their events are vastly different than what I'm used to. They hold on to their traditions harder, so it's really difficult for me to relate to their events. But the biggest factor is the number of people in the country. Events are just so much busier. I remember going to the Peach Blossom Festival to see the beautiful flowering peach trees, but it was just so packed with people that it was hard to enjoy the beauty. I think in China, the people get excited about that though. They gravitate towards the crowd, uh, but for me, it's just too hectic. The events are also harder to get information about because they use different apps in China, and reading the language is so know, difficult cats, that it's hard for me to even hotels, install the app, let alone booze, read all the events that are coming delivery, up. Um, pies? I don't know. Okay, let's move on to safety. China is one of the safest countries I've ever been to. I never worried about getting robbed. I would carry my wallet in my back pocket. Of course, I'd be cautious on the public transit, but uh, I think you always should be. I think it's just common sense. But I would never carry my wallet in my back pocket in Ecuador. There's a lot more robberies here. I've only been in Ecuador for six months or so, seven months, and I know two people that have been robbed. I think the roads are more dangerous here as well. I see more accidents. But that's probably because the roads are twisting and turning through the mountains. There's big hills and stuff, so it's just a more dangerous environment to drive in. I do find that there's actually more of a police presence in Ecuador than there is in China, but still China gets the point for safety. Sip of tea in between each one. Now, if you can't manage to stay safe and you get hurt, I'd much rather be in Ecuador than China. To be honest, I'm slightly appalled by China's healthcare system. In the three years that I was there, I had more than one friend that had a misdiagnosed broken bone. That's just unacceptable, in my opinion. I really think Chinese medicine is holding China back. For the most part, there's no scientific evidence that supports it. My friend broke her foot, and she was given a concoction of cockroaches and herbs to, to soak her foot in. Uh, they literally blew smoke on her foot to fight off infection. I also know somebody who got a urinary tract infection and the Chinese hospital was such a nightmare dealing with it that they just flew to Japan and just got it taken care of there. Another friend had a deviated septum, so he had a septoplasty to get it cleared out. And it's a fairly minor surgery, but they had him stay in the hospital for seven days. In Canada, something like that would be maybe same day you'd be out or possibly overnight, one night. On the other hand, Ecuador's healthcare system is pretty good. I don't want to get into our personal health problems, but we've made a few visits to the clinic. Wait time there was maybe 30 minutes. That's without an appointment. Checkup costs around $25. Blood work was $60. We've even had a minor surgery here, and I think we were well taken care of. On top of that, Ecuador also offers healthier living than China. 
the pollution in China can be bad. I find that for the most part, there's more hormones in the food there. You don't have to worry about gutter oil here. And Ecuador is also more into organic food. It's easier to grow things here. So there's a wider variety of fruits and vegetables that are grown locally. So that's a point for Ecuador under the health category. Okay, I'm moving on to one of my favorite things to do. One of the biggest reasons that we moved overseas, travel. The two countries are very different when it comes to travel. People who are looking for a vacation will probably prefer Ecuador, but someone who is looking to learn about the world, uh, maybe learn about a new culture, they would probably prefer China. I think Ecuador is easier to travel, partially because of the language. A lot more people speak English here. Spanish is easier for English-speaking people to understand than Chinese is. Also, the culture is more similar to what you're probably used to, so your common sense will kind of get you further here. Accommodations in Ecuador are more of the bed and breakfast style. In China, you're going to be staying in cities more, so you're going to get more of the traditional hotels. China probably has more cool tourist attractions, but they're spread out. You can't really see them all in one trip. And honestly, I didn't really enjoy them that much because just there's so many people at them. It's just crowds of people. For me, the best attractions in China are simply the cities and the towns themselves. Just walking around, checking out markets and street food scenes, sitting in the parks and people watching. There's just so much going on at all times in China. I did a, two solo trips across the country by land. And while I can't really name an like, unforgettable, incredible site like, say, Kilatoa in Ecuador, but there's so many memorable moments where I'm just like sitting in a park and watching old guys exercise by whipping tops. And I remember standing at the edge of the Yangtze and chatting with a man who was about to swim in the murky waters. Just stuff like that, it really sticks with you and it makes you think about life a bit more rather than just seeing a tourist attraction and being like, oh, that's really cool, that's beautiful. So China is more interesting, but uh, Ecuador is kind of more relaxing. I'm gonna call this one a draw. It all depends on what you're looking for. Next up is the nature. The nature, or beauty, or weather. Um, basically just like how the natural beauty of the country. China is so big that you kind of get everything, but I find that Ecuador has more natural beauty. Like they leave the nature as it is. It's untouched. Uh, in China, they'll put human elements in with the nature, whether it's like statues around a lake, or they'll pave paths up the mountain and stuff. In Ecuador, you're walking on dirt paths. And, you know, I prefer that. Also, the weather is great here. Some people complain about it. The Ecuadorians complain about it more than they really should. But it's consistent year-round. We don't have AC. We don't have any type of heating. We don't even have a fan. And it's comfortable in the house all year-round. You know, if it gets a little hot, maybe I crack a window, put a sweater on if it's cold. But for the most part, like I haven't been uncomfortable in the whole seven months I've been here. There are parts of China that have that eternal spring thing going on, but for the most part, China's weather can get pretty harsh at times. I lived in Chengdu, which has terrible weather. It's always cloudy, and you, you get like four days of sun a year. So. so Ecuador is definitely getting this point. I don't think many countries in the world can compete with Ecuador's natural beauty and its consistently beautiful weather. Now I want to compare the food. I've already made a video about food in China claiming it's the best food country in the world. I stand by this. Food in China is tastier. There are more options. It's cheaper to eat out. The restaurants are often more exciting. But it's harder to find food that isn't Chinese. In Ecuador, you find Mexican food, Argentinian food, American, Indian, even a bastardized version of Chinese food. Coffee and beer, two of my favorite things, are better in Ecuador. But I still I have to choose China over Ecuador when it comes to the food. Watch Chengdu City of Gastronomy. Ding, 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 ding. Next up is language, Spanish versus Mandarin. Spanish is easier to learn. I can actually read it. It took me a couple of weeks to, to be able to decipher a menu here. In China, it took me probably a year. There are also many dialects of Mandarin, so it was hard for me to learn in Sichuan because half the people are probably speaking Sichuanese. Oh. Oh. That being said, I did enjoy Mandarin as a language more. It's different than English, it's more fun to learn, and more rewarding in some ways. For example, the word for telephone in Spanish is telefono. It's really simple to learn. You understand it as soon as you hear it. 
uh, but kind of boring. In Chinese, the word for telephone is dian hua. Dian means electric. Hua means words, so it's electric words. It's kind of fun. You're speaking into the telephone. It makes your words electric. I don't know. And also, you're learning three words in one. So I don't know. I, I, I love that about China, and there's a lot of examples of that. Uh, but at the same time, it's so difficult that you can only learn really so much. So I'm going to call this one a tie. Spanish is easier. Chinese is more fun. I don't know. It's a tie. Next on my list is transportation. The public transit in China is incredible. You can easily get anywhere in the country using public transit. There's also Didi, which is the equivalent of Uber. Uh, it's really cheap. It's really simple. You don't have to speak Chinese. You just call the car, get in it, and he knows where you're going. Ecuador's public transit, I find it's a bit of a mess. The local buses don't really stick to a schedule. They just have locations written on them, no numbers. So I'll go on Google Maps and it'll say, take bus number five but there's no number on the bus, so I have to read the name of the place it's going, but as a newbie, I didn't know all these places and like directions. It's, so I got lost so many more times in Ecuador than I did in my three years in China. In Ecuador, the buses are also in worse shape. They're spewing out black smoke, while in China, a lot of them have gone electric, so they're quiet and just a smooth ride. Ecuador also has Uber and cheap taxis, but when it comes to long distance travel, your only option is really the bus. In China, they have the high-speed train, which is phenomenal, it covers so much of the, the country, and it's probably three times faster than a bus, maybe four times faster than a bus. Actually, when you consider all the stops it has to make, it's probably five times faster than a bus. It's just, you can cover so much more ground on that high-speed train, so China easily wins that one. This is kind of a tough one because I've only lived in one place in each country, but I want to compare housing, and I'm going to give this, this one to Ecuador. If you just look at the place that I'm living in now, it's beautiful, there's a great view. In China, I think it's limited because there are so many people, way less space, uh, so the apartments seem to be tinier. Uh, it's hard for them to really compete in this category. In China, I only lived in the apartment that Sarah's school provided us. It was a total dump. In Ecuador, the school gave us money, so they said, you know, go find the apartment, there's how much money you have. So we could be a lot pickier. But from what I've seen, Ecuador has cooler apartments. They have a lot more houses. China does have nice, like, apartments, but uh, they tend to be smaller and just more people packed in a smaller area. Now, while both countries are pretty cheap to live in, shopping is a category that China easily takes. Ecuador has a very high import tax, so prices for anything made outside of the country are really high. They're probably twice as much as you'd get them in North America. I guess you could say the same for China, but fortunately for them, they make everything there, so you can get really cheap items. Taobao, the Chinese equivalent of Amazon, has everything you'd ever want on it. It's quickly delivered to your house. It's really incredible. I'm going to use a hair dryer as the comparison point because it's one of the only things that we've bought here. Sarah had to buy one, and we shopped around for a while and ended up costing $15 for the cheapest one we could find. On Taobao, right now, I can go online and find one for only $3 in China and it's delivered within two days or so. I wouldn't recommend getting a $3 hair dryer, but it's just, it's a, shows you how cheap things can be in China. Last category is people. I wanted to include the category, but I'll tell you right now, this one's a tie. I, I'm not gonna choose which people are better. I just wanted to make a comparison, which is a generalization, of course. It's based on my experiences. No group of people are better. They're both awesome in different ways. But I find that Ecuador, there's more individuality. You see a lot of tattoos here. Uh, people care less about money. They get fired up easier. They're willing to express their opinions more openly. They like to party more. In China, people don't call each other out for something like bad work performance. They will call each other out for other aspects of life. Like if you're a woman, you're 30, and you're unmarried, they don't have a problem like, commenting about it. Uh, if you put on weight, they'll comment about it. There's a lot more emphasis on work in China. As a foreigner, I got more attention in China, which is both good and bad. You know, sometimes people want to just be accommodating, and they, they'll give you something extra, maybe at a restaurant or something. Um, and then also you're getting people who are taking photos of you more because they just they haven't seen too many Westerners. 
I found both cultures very friendly and hospitable. The Chinese are less reserved than Ecuadorians. Ecuadorians are probably more polite. The Chinese are more direct. There's an interesting spatial thing in China because there's so many people, there's less space, so people will stand closer to you. They're less concerned with spatial awareness. Uh, that takes some getting used to, but at the same time, it's not a bad thing necessarily. I like the bluntness of China. I don't have to worry about upsetting people. There are less social faux pas. I can like literally walk down the sidewalk, playing music on my phone, spitting every 50 meters, and people don't care. No one, I wouldn't feel bad about it. People wouldn't bat an eye. In Ecuador, you know, I would feel like an asshole. Uh, so it's, it's kind of cool to have that freedom, but you also have to get over the fact that other people are going to be doing that. <laughs> So I guess it depends on how easily annoyed you are. China can be stressful if you let it get to you. You'll have kids climbing around, making noises, playing video games really loud. But you just have to be able to laugh it off. So both sets of people, very different. But people are people. You get amazingly friendly people in both countries. And you also get sociopaths in both countries. For the record, I've had people clip their fingernails on public transit next to me in both countries. Okay, so let's look at the results, and guess what? It's a tie. It's almost like I planned that. I love both places for different reasons, so I'm not going to choose a winner, but I will say that Ecuador is a better place to retire. It's a better place to settle down. China is a better place to live when you're younger, when you're looking for more excitement. I wish more people would give China a chance. There's a real misconception when it comes to the country. It's an incredible place to live. It's easy to live there. It, it really does change you as a person. It makes you more tolerant, more patient, and it opens your mind to, to things so much more. Ecuador is straight up breathtakingly beautiful. If you just look at this view I have here, I wake up to this every morning and I watch hummingbirds as I swim in the pool. To most people, that probably sounds a lot more appealing than China, but I do miss China every day. I love both countries for different reasons, and uh, I'm not going to choose between my children. So that's it. Subscribe, hit the thumbs up, comment below, wash your hands, stay safe out there. And I don't know if you can hear that, but Sarah is uh, making something, and the tea kettle's going off, disrupting my video. So I'm going to go lay this smack down. Sarah, why are you making so much noise? Prefer when I'm by myself. I don't wanna hang around y'all. Pray for good health. One day I'm gonna go more. Fuck around and buy the home more. Breaking that cake. Flexing 700 in the bank. Not a superhero, I don't save. Look at my face. Look at my grace. Don't match up, no love. Fuck a date. I just fade. When I hit the jack, you can keep the pot. Every night I gamble, I stop. Yeah. When I check the cost, I was like, Oh, that's expensive. I bully flex in my ear.